Okay, so uh, my name is Thibaut Soyer, and um, okay, yeah, uh, my name is Thibaut Soyer, and um, I work at uh, EPFL Lausanne. Uh, but uh, this is about uh, what I did during my uh, PhD in Paris with Matteo Calandra and Francesco Maori. And um, so this is about uh, implementing two-dimensional uh, Coulomb cutoff in PW and PH uh, to do some DFT and DFPT for 2D systems. So um, as you all know, there's a, a lot of research uh, going on these days about 2D materials and heterostructures. And so the goal here is to implement an easy and correct way to simulate all those kind of heterostructures as the one you can see here. Um, the issue is that currently Quantum Espresso has a couple difficulties with some um, key aspects of this 2D materials physics. Um, the first one that we're going to talk about today is doping uh, as it happens in the field effect transistor setup. So this is not part of the 2D material uh, itself, but um, it's so often used in experiments and devices that it's interesting to be able to simulate this. Um, the second thing is linear response of those 2D materials to long wavelength perturbations. And uh, by linear response, I mean uh, electronic screening, phonons, and electron phonon coupling. Okay, so the reason why uh, Quantum Expresso has those issues is because, like many other codes, it works with 3D periodic boundary conditions, which means that you simulate the 2D material plus its periodic images. And this is a problem for uh, the FET setup and the linear response. Uh, in the FET setup, the idea is to uh, dope or charge the 2D material by placing um, a charged gate uh, in front of it. And um, what is special and interesting about this uh, setup is that from the point of view of the 2D material, there is a asymmetric um, configuration in terms of electric field. So the 2D material sees a finite electric field on the side of the gate and zero electric field on the other side. And the problem with this, um, this configuration is that uh, the corresponding potential mm -hmm. looks something like this with constant values on both sides of the system but a linear increase or decrease, depending on the doping, uh, in between the gate and the 2D material, which means that uh, there is a shift in the value of the potential as you cross the system from left to right here. Um, and of course, the, the potential doesn't have the same value on both sides of this box, and this potential uh, does not comply with 3D periodic boundary conditions. So this is the first problem. Um, with linear response, the issue is that uh, when you perturb a two-dimensional electron gas at a certain wavelength uh, lambda, uh, it's going to respond by um, uh, generating a potential that decays in the out-of-plane direction on the, same, on the length scale of the same uh, wavelength lambda. And um, at long wavelength, um, so when lambda becomes large, this induced potential can f uh, reach quite far away in the out-of-plane direction. And when it touches the periodic images, you get some interaction with periodic images, and which means you're not simulating anymore the response of an isolated 2D material. And this is particularly relevant for uh, electronic screening, screening electron phonon coupling, and uh, polar optical phonons that we are going to talk about a little later. Um, OK, so uh, fortunately, all of this can be uh, solved by using a two-dimensional Coulomb cutoff. Uh, the idea is uh, relatively simple, and it's not new at all. It's implemented uh, in other codes already. Um, so the idea is that every uh, potential in the code is generated by a certain uh, charge density uh, via the Coulomb interaction, um, so this, this interaction here. Um, so we just modify the Coulomb interaction such that every charge density generates its potential only within a certain slab around itself. And outside of the slab, the potential is put to zero. And if you put the boundaries of the slab uh, to be in between each periodic images that you see here, um, you end up with a, um, a situation where you have an isolated slab put next to each other. And in each slab, there is one periodic image of the system that doesn't see the other periodic images because the, the, the potentials from them don't reach uh, it. Um, OK, so um, as I said, the principle is relatively simple. It's not new. Um, the, the work was to uh, actually uh, compute physical quantities with this potential. Um, and um, so that's uh, what I uh, did during my PhD. I, I implemented the 2D cutoff and the field effect setup. 
at the DFT and DFPT level to compute total energy, uh, forces, stresses, phonons, and electron phonon coupling um, within this two dimensional framework. <laughs> okay, so this all works with the usual families of uh, pseudopotentials. And let's uh, look a little bit more in detail at how it works at the level of the potentials first. And in a very uh, simple system with just uh, 2D material, which uh, in practice is uh, probably graphene here, but that's not really important, a 2D material and uh, a gate with a vacuum everywhere else. Uh, and if we look at the potential generated by uh, the gate here in, in red, so the gate is here, and um, within a certain slab defined by this arrow here, um, the potential is what we expect, that is a linearly decreasing potential um, in the out-of-plane direction. So this is what we expect for a, um, a plane of uh, negatively charged plane. Um, now we can do the same. So uh, the, the potential is generated inside the slab, and outside the slab, what we see here, for example, is actually the potential generated by the periodic images. So um, we don't care about this part of the potential. With respect to this periodic image that we are looking at right now, we are only interested in the potential within this region that we uh, define as where the gate potential is physical. We can do the same thing with the 2D material. So the, the ions are here. Um, if you uh, look in this region here, you see that the potential is linearly increasing, what we expect for um, a positively charged plane. And then as you approach the, the cutoff distance, you see those bumps here uh, that are not physical, they are uh, an artifact of uh, using the, the cutoff and so on. Um, so they are not physical and they should be um, excluded from the region that we define as where the potential of the material makes sense. And um, then in the overlap of those red and blue region here, we define a physical region where all the potential generated by all the subsystems <coughs> make sense. And in this physical region, uh, if we look at the sum of the potential, indeed we recover uh, what we wanted with um, this asymmetric uh, configuration in, in terms of uh, field effect. Outside the physical region, you see that there are some weird variations of the potential, but that's okay as long as the 2D material and the electrons stay uh, in the physical region. Okay, um, now let's talk about total energy and forces. And actually, we have to uh, add another kind of potentials uh, to, um, to have a system that makes sense and that works. Um, and this is the barrier potential. So we just increase the value of the potential in some certain regions. Um, we first do this uh, outside of the physical region. So this is just a way to forbid uh, the electrons from going outside of the physical region. Um, and there's another reason uh, to use this um, potential barrier here on this side. And it's because um, the gates and the 2D material are oppositely charged, so they attract each other. And so to have a system at equilibrium, you need something to uh, counteract this attraction. In reality, this is done by the dielectric that you put between the gates and the 2D material. Um, but here, we mimic the effect of the dielectric by just putting a potential barrier, which is going to push back the electrons when they get too close. Um, okay, now we can plot uh, the energy and the force on, on the system, and we see um, as a function of the distance between the barrier and the 2D material. When um, the 2D material gets too close to the uh, barrier, um, the energy shoots, shoots up and the, the force is large and positive, which means the, the material is pushed back. Um, when the distance is very large, the, the energy uh, goes increases linearly and the force goes to a constant, which is the constant attraction between two charged planes. Um, and in between, of course, you have an equilibrium situation where the total energy goes through a minimum and the force goes through zero. So there's nothing um, uh, very exciting physically here, but just to, work, uh, to, to, to show you that uh, everything works um, well uh, in terms of total energy and forces. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, linear response and, um, and phonons, and um, I will uh, stay on very simple system, even though uh, the, the linear response does work for the field effect transistor setup, uh, there's already a lot to say uh, with uh, simple isolated uh, 2D materials, so uh, I'll stay on this. And so we're going to talk about uh, LO-TO uh, splitting, so the idea is that um, longitudinal optical phonons 
in uh, polar materials generate little dipoles that interact with each other. And um, this, um, this mechanism increases the energy of the LO phonon with respect to the, um, the energy of the TO phonon. And um, this, this, this phenomena that is driven by, um, by dipole-dipole interactions at long wavelength becomes uh, long-ranged. And uh, so for small phonon momentum near gamma, um, this long-range dipole-dipole interactions uh, become highly dependent on dimensionality. So we are expecting to see some differences um, in the phenomenon in 3D or 2D. And indeed, that's uh, what we see if we uh, plot this LO-TO splitting, so the dispersion of the TO and LO mode uh, near the gamma point, so at very small uh, phonon momentum here. Uh, we see in 3D uh, born nitride, I chose born nitride because it has relatively high, uh, like strong, uh, effective charges. Um, so, um, if we do this in bulk born nitride using the usual uh, 3D code, we get this constant splitting of the, the two mode, which is well known. Now, if we do this in monolayer born nitride using the, the 2D cutoff, uh, we see that there is a, a dr drastically different uh, behavior. The LO phonon, um, in particular, uh, the, the LO phonon, the, the splitting vanishes uh, at gamma. It's zero here at gamma. But uh, it starts with a finite slope. Uh, so the, the dispersion of the LO phonon starts with the finite slope here. And this is typically uh, two dimensional. You cannot get this finite slope with periodic images and so on. So um, you need the 2D cutoff to simulate this. Um, okay, so this is nice to have this um, this code because um, now we can uh, simulate this in other in other polar monolayers. See uh, different strength in um, the, the this this phenomenon. Here I plot uh, three different monolayers uh, in, in in order of increasing strength of the effect. Um, and of course, we can, um, with the support of the FPT calculation, we can uh, develop models, analytical models, to uh, study all this and understand it uh, better. And um, so I won't talk too much about uh, the, the models uh, today. Um, I will just say that uh, the key players here are uh, born effective charges and uh, screening, as it is in, in, in 3D. But the big difference is that. Uh, uh, screening doesn't work um, the same as in uh, 3D. So, um, in particular, you need to um, to use a uh, momentum-dependent uh, screening function to uh, uh, to to convey how uh, screening works in 2D. Okay. If you want more details, I have a, a poster at the Total Energy Conference. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about is very much uh, linked to what I just uh, showed. So now, instead of uh, considering, um, so we consider the same uh, dipoles generated by those uh, LO phonons, but this time uh, we look at how they interact with electrons. And this gives a relatively strong uh, electron-phonon coupling, uh, which is often called the Fordish interaction. And uh, here again, um, this is uh, something that is highly dependent on dimensionality at long wavelength. And so we look at this electron-phonon coupling uh, near gamma, <laughs> This time in uh, MOS2. Uh, and first in bulk MOS2, we see that the, the, the interaction diverges at, as, uh, as one over the momentum uh, as the momentum uh, gets to close to gamma. Uh, whereas in 2D, uh, in monolayer uh, MOS2, this, um, this, this um, coupling goes to a finite value uh, at gamma. So different colors here are uh, different um, for electrons in different bands and so on, but um, it's the same kind of coupling uh, every time. Um, so, and again, this, this finite value at gamma here is something typically uh, two-dimensional that you cannot get with um, the, the periodic images and, and, and so on. Um, and again, we, it's nice to have this, this, uh, this code to simulate this in several um, monolayers here in different uh, transition metal decalcogenide uh, to see um, the variety of strength you can have in different materials. Um, and again, we uh, use the FPT to, um, to, to support us in developing uh, analytical models. And uh, the main players are uh, the Born effective charges via this constant here and uh, screening in two dimensions. Um, and again, more details on my poster at Total Energy. 
Okay, so um, to conclude, we have um, implemented um, this 2D cutoff and, and the FET setup uh, uh, configuration for total energy, forces, stress. Um, we can do in-plane structural optimizations, uh, phonons at single queue, and also the interpolation process that also has to be changed for um, with the 2D cutoff. Um, electron phonon interaction, all of this works. Um, this works with the usual pseudo potentials and uh, configuration. Most importantly, it is um, AIDA compatible. So, um, so I'm working now in Lausanne in EPFL where there's a lot of uh, high throughput going on with AIDA. So it was necessary to, to make it uh, compatible with this. Um, and it is high throughput friendly uh, because you don't have to use huge distances between uh, periodic images to get uh, 2D results. Um, and um, in terms of perspectives, um, so uh, we intend to integrate this in a future quantum source release if the community is interested. Um, and uh, so I still need to check uh, more thoroughly compatibility with Van der Waals functionals, which is not very uh, not a problem when you use a monolayer, but when you use other structures, it, it might be important. And then is, is a list of things uh, that uh, Quantum Espresso does and that I have not looked into in uh, into details. Uh, There's not necessarily a problem. It may not even make sense to talk about 2D cutoff and those things. But are just a list that um, might uh, we might think about. Uh, okay. And thank you for listening and to all those people. Thank you very much.